So we've discussed transistor logic gates with the transistors in a serial arrangement. NPN transistors in a serial arrangement are a NAND gate, and PNP in a serial arrangement are a NOR gate. And I showed how you could flip the resistor to the other side for each one and turn a NAND into an AND and a NOR into an OR, but how there are problems with that, and it's really not reliable and you shouldn't do it. You can if it works for your purpose and you're careful about it, but it's recommended against. So so really, serial gets us just NAND and NOR. So what about parallel? As it turns out, it's the opposite. NPNs in parallel give a NOR, PNPs in parallel give a NAND. Let's take a look. A parallel arrangement of NPNs or PNP transistors is quite simple. You have your connection to positive and negative, just like before, and then let's say you have NPNs. So instead of chaining an emitter to collector, emitter to collector, and so forth, you put them like this. All of the collectors are connected to your resistor. Once again, just like the NPNs in series, the resistor goes on the collector because the collector to emitter junction and the base to emitter junction are split. So if you put it on the emitter, it joins and that's where you get that leakage. So you put the resistor on the collector because that's separate from the base. And again, just like before, we take our output between the resistor and the collectors. So let me move this down a bit. So all the collectors are just connected there and all the emitters are just connected there. And the bases are still your inputs, just like before. You've got inputs, 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 inputs. Your inputs are the bases. The collectors connect to the output. The emitters connect to the negative. And the output has got a resistor to positive. It's exactly the same. All you did was took these that were vertical and made them horizontal in this particular circuit arrangement. So that's all parallel versus serial is. Now remember what I said about logic gates made up of transistors. You've got all kinds of complex functions like XOR and XNOR. I love that name, XNOR. But the gates themselves, an individual gate, you have one voltage that is output when none of them are conducting, and one voltage that is output when there is conduction. In a serial arrangement, all of them have to be conducting, so that's your one. If none of them are conducting, then that's your other. So you've got one voltage when all are on, and one voltage when at least one is not on. In this case, you've got one voltage when all is off, and one voltage when at least one is on. That's why it flips, but it's the same thing. When the transistors are all closed, it's as if they're not there, and you have this output is high, connected straight through this resistor and out, and once again, in a real circuit, you know, whatever's over here, this resistor is gonna have a drop if there's current, but it's effectively connected straight to positive, straight to this power, and the circuit behaves as if this wasn't there and you just plugged it straight into the power with the resistor. And then if any of these has a high voltage on the base, enough to forward bias the base to emitter junction, one of them is conducting, so, and since they're parallel, well, that's enough. So you then have that short to ground to negative to reference and all of the voltage drop is on the resistor. So if all of them are low, the output is high. If any of them are high, the output is low. So if we look at the OR function, the OR function says the output is high if any of the inputs are high. The only way to get a low, a zero on OR, is to have all zeros as input. In this case, all zeros on input equals one, because that's high. If any of these are one, then it shorts down to zero and you get zero out. So that's the opposite of the OR function, which means it's a NOR gate. So in serial, NPNs make a NAND gate. In parallel, they make a NOR. And what happens if we flip this resistor down? Well, we can see basically the same thing as before. The base to emitter is part of the circuit now. If all of them are low, you're not getting any leakage. Before, you could have the bottom one turn on, and even though it was supposed to not conduct, it was conducting because of base to emitter. Well, in this case, only one of them has to be on to conduct in the normal case. So if that one is on, you'd think it would work fine, except the base to emitter is there, so there is a voltage difference. But when I show you on a breadboard, it's a little more interesting. But for right now, this is the normal arrangement that will give you exactly what you expect. You'll get five, if this supply is five volts, if all of these are off, you will get five. If any of these is on, you'll get zero within, you know, dozens of microvolts, or millivolts rather, dozens of millivolts. So PNPs, once again, mirroring the serial setup, the resistor goes on the bottom, and then you have your PNPs connected in parallel. Because once again, 
on a PNP, the emitter to base and emitter to collector are separate. So if you connect to the collector, that is just the emitter to collector, and the base does not affect it other than turning it on and off. But if you connect to the emitter, then you're getting the emitter to base and the emitter to collector mixture. So we put it on the collector. All of the collectors connect down there, and all of the emitters connect to your power. It's just the mirror image like usual, and then, of course, your bases are the inputs, just like before. Now, for a PNP, recall it's opposite. If all of these are high, if all the bases are high and the emitters are high, that means they're closed. You have to give the base a low for a PNP to open it up. So if all of these are high, if all of these are on, if all of them are one, logic one, binary one rather, logic true, binary one, voltage high, then there is no conduction and your output is connected to zero through this resistor. As if none of this was here, zero is through to the rest of the circuit, so you get zero. Regardless of whatever else is going on, it's effectively putting out a zero and the rest of the circuit is responsible for using that zero. If any of these are low, if one of them is low, it's conducting, and the rest of them don't matter because there is a conductive path through. Emitter to collector, minuscule drop, effectively zero, practically zero. So then we have a short to high. So if all of them are high, all of them are off, then you have, I should clarify, if all of the inputs are high, if all of the transistors are off, then you have low output. If any of these go low, so the transistor turns on, then you get a short to positive. So it's a high output. So if we think about the AND function, the AND function requires all of your inputs to be high to get a high output, because it wants to know A and B and C and D if all of them are on. So all of them on equals on. Any of them off, even just one of them, equals off. In this case, all of them on equals off. And if any of them turn on, then it goes high. So if the AND function is any of them going to zero means the output is zero, and in this case, any of them going to zero means the output is one, it's the opposite of AND, which is NAND. So PNPs in serial is NOR, in parallel is NAND. So once again, that delightful symmetry, they mirror each other. And then again, if we put the resistor up here, then it should be functional because if all of these bases are high, then there's no leakage. Emitter to base is high, there's no conduction. If one of them goes low, then it'll turn on, which is what we want, but emitter to base is in the circuit, so that's going to affect the voltage. But how does it affect it? In an interesting way, not the same way as the serial issue, and let me now show you on a breadboard. So I have my power supply just like before, configured to five volts, and I'm going to use the multimeter, the voltmeter, to measure the output rather than using LEDs. So let's start with NPN. So I connect the positive into a resistor. These are the same 10K resistors I was using last time, and this is the same input that gives straight access to high and low, and then the LEDs are in parallel just to demonstrate the output. So through the resistor into an NPN collector. Then I will connect that collector to the next collector, and I will continue to connect together all of the collectors of five transistors, five NPNs. As a reminder, these are just two N3904 NPN and two N3906 PNP, bog standard. So that's all the collectors connected together. So I will take negative, connect it to the first emitter, and then I will just connect all of these emitters together. If my wires will be less wiggly. So that is all the emitters collected, connected together. So now I will connect the inputs, which are through their own 10K resistors, into the bases. And I will use my multimeter to measure the output of the resistor, so between the resistor and the transistor. This is supposed to be a NOR gate. Any input, in an OR gate, any input being one will give high. In this case, it's NOR, so any input being one should give zero. All of the inputs are zero, so we're getting high. If I turn any of them on, we go down to zero. Turn this one on, turn this one on. Any of the inputs going high turns it to low. And then if I turn all of them on, we just get a nice steady zero. Perfect. We have a NOR gate. So now I will try to make an OR gate by moving the resistor to the other side. So I disconnect the resistor, the positive and negative. So now the positive will go directly into the first collector, the last, or not the first collector, but all the collectors because they're together. So the emitter, which are all connected together, will be connected to the output of a resistor, the input of a resistor, or there's not really an input and output because it's just a resistor is nonpolar. So I will measure between the resistor and the emitters. So I'm getting zero with all of them off, so this should be an OR gate, so turning one of them on should give me high. And it is, but not as high as you'd expect, about 4.5. Turn on a different one, about the same, 
about the same. So it's going up like an OR gate, but it's not going all the way to five. Let me turn on one and two of them and three, four, five. I've now turned on all of them and throughout all of these changes, it's stayed at about 4.5, which is roughly a forward voltage drop of a diode. You know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts could be anywhere in there, but it's stable. No matter how many inputs are on or off, we're getting that same number. It's not like the serial. In the serial, the voltage was changing for each combination. In this one, it's not. You simply have a different high voltage. You have one voltage for low and one voltage for high. And the high voltage is not what you expect, but it's stable. So think about NPN and PNP. Think about the output here. So let's say low. If you had an NPN connected to the output of this and you had low, then the output will not turn on the next NPN, correct? If you have this much voltage connected to an NPN, it will turn it on. So connect the output here to an NPN and you will get the correct result. So if you chain NPNs, you can do this and it'll work perfectly fine. But what if you connect it to a PNP? With a PNP connecting zero should turn it on and it does, but this voltage will not turn the PNP off because the PNP will have about five on its emitter and about four and a half ish on the collector, which should be enough to turn it on. It may not turn on fully, but it's close enough that it's probably going to turn on. So you cannot connect this and get the correct result if the next one in the series, in the sequence rather, is a PNP. But if it's NPN, this will still work fine. And because every gate has its own fresh connection to power, you're not going to get a consistent voltage drop per layer. Every layer is going to see a five input. So if every layer is like this, then its output will be 4.5, then the next one's input will be five, might go down to 4.5 again. So unlike the series connection, where it's variable and rough and prone to circuit changes, this one is not. It's not the high voltage that you'd expect, but it is a stable voltage as long as you keep NPN to NPN to NPN. So let's look at PNP. So let me pull all this out. So for a PNP, you start with a straight connection from positive into the emitter, and then you chain the emitters together. You short them all together, however you want to look at it. Then you take the negative through a resistor, and that resistor you connect to the collector of one of them, and then connect the other collectors together. So now the emitters and collectors are together. Then connect the inputs to the bases, and then you measure between the resistor and the transistors. So this is supposed to be a NAND gate. For an AND gate, if all of the inputs are one, then you get a one. If any of the inputs are zero, you get a zero. So this is the opposite. A NAND gate, you have to have all inputs one to get a zero. And if any of the inputs are zero, you get a one. So if I turn on one input, it stays high, stays high, stays high, until I turn on all five and we get low. So this is a NAND gate. Very good. So NPN in series is NAND, parallel is NOR. PNP in series is NOR, parallel is NAND. But what if I flip the resistor? Once again, disconnect the resistor and the power. So now I will take positive through a resistor into the emitters and the collectors will be connected directly to negative. And I will measure between the resistor and the emitters. So this is supposed to be an AND gate now. If any of the inputs are zero, then you should get a zero. For an AND gate, all the inputs have to be one to get a one. Right now, they're all off. So this should be a low, but we're getting about 0.58. Now, isn't that another diode voltage drop? Again, it's a little bit low, but 0.5 to 0.7 is a reasonable range. We just use 0 0.6, 0 0.7 as a rough bit. You know, it's on. This is enough to turn it on, even if not completely fully. So if I turn any of the inputs on, it stays about the same. I turn two of them on, three of them on. It's wiggling a little bit. It's going up by dozens of millivolts, but not too terribly much. It's still stable. Even with four of them on, it's only gone up to 0.65. So that's less than 100 millivolts change. But if I turn all of them on, now we get our full high. Any of them off goes back down any of them high, all of them high, it goes to high. So we have an AND gate, and once again, 
this low voltage. If you connect this to an NPN, the high will definitely turn it on, but the low will not turn it off because 0.63 is definitely enough to turn on your average NPN. 0.63 on the base, zero on the emitter, you're gonna get enough forward voltage drop to turn it on. But a PNP, 4.93 is definitely enough to turn a PNP off. 4.93 on the base, five-ish on the emitter, that's not enough to turn it on. That's not enough of a difference. So it will be off, which is right. A PNP should be off on high. And the lower voltage is definitely enough to turn it on. Anything from 4.5 on down should turn it on. So if you connect PNP to PNP to PNP, despite not getting a true low, you'll get enough, a correct result, to make the PNPs down chain work correctly. And each of them has fresh connections to power and ground. So this is not something that will propagate. It's stable, it's perfectly usable. So if you have the normal setup where the resistor is between the collectors and either the negative or positive, whichever. If the resistor is next to the collector, so NPN, collectors are on top the way we usually draw it. So between resistor and high, resistor and high, between resistor and high. And then for PNP, the resistor, the, col the collector is on negative, so it'll be between the resistor and ground and the transistors. If you connect it normally, then you can connect NPNs and PNPs together just fine. You'll be getting your true highs and true lows. And you just have to remember your resistor if you mix because you'll get a short between high and low, but it'll work and you can mix them just fine. You just need an extra resistor. But if you do this, you have to connect like to like, NPN to NPN, PNP to PNP, but it's stable. Unlike the series where it's not advisable to try and use it in the other arrangement, this is. So you can have NAND, AND, NOR, OR gates with no extra transistors. A neat little trick. So those enterprising souls among you might have wondered, what about mixing and matching? If you have NPNs in series, we know that you need to have the resistor next to the collector of an NPN, otherwise you can get haywire results. But what if you leave that NPN alone, but the ones downstairs, what if you change those out for PNPs? Or if you have a PNP in series, what if you change the upstairs out for NPNs and just leave the PNP next to the resistor alone so there's no leakage? Or in the parallel, what happens if you flip them around? That's a topic for the next video because we have some experimentation to do. Until then, I'll be seeing you.